everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another Buyer Quest song tutorial. Today I'm very excited to break down a song that I've received tons and tons of requests for over the years. It is the Grateful Dead's 1970 classic, Ripple. I'm going to take you through my interpretation of the intro, where we'll combine the rhythm and the lead guitar sections. From there, I will reveal the chord progressions for the verse and the chorus, and also some strumming options. I got all the tabs available for you at patreon.com slash swiftlessons, where if you support the channel for just $1 a month, you can gain access to tabs and other resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started with a full demonstration, then I'll break it all down for you. One, two, three, four, one. If my words did glow With the gold of sunshine And my tunes were plain On a heart unstrung Would you hear my voice Come through music Would you hold it near as it were your own, it's a hand-me-down The thoughts are broken Perhaps they're better left unsung I don't know Don't really care Lynn songs to fill the air Ripple in still water When the ears nor pale toss nor wind to blow Reach out your hands If you can't be if your cup is full, may it be again, let it be known. There is a fountain that was not mean by the hands of men. There is a road. No simple highway Between the dawn and the dark of night And if you go No one may follow That path is for Your steps alone
Okay, a close look at the fretboard and also my pick in hand. We're getting started with the intro section. We're gonna take this two measures at a time. I'm gonna ask that you follow along using the tablature at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. So getting started with those first two measures, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Okay, so that first little riff there, second fret of the A string, the B note, gets us started. Then we're gonna go to the third fret, low E. Back to that second fret, A string. Third fret of the A. And then the open D string. Then you're gonna grab the G major chord and strum. Root, down, root, up, down. And that strumming pattern we're actually gonna use throughout the entire song. Root, down, root, up, down. One, two, and four again. Okay, so get used to that strumming pattern now. Okay, measures three and four will sound like this. Okay, so we have the G major chord, we're gonna strum root, down, up. Then we're gonna play open B, second fret G, open G. All right, that sounds like this. Then we go to a C major chord. We're gonna start off by striking the uh, A string and G string together hybrid style. Okay, then a down up on the high strings, G, B, and E. Zero, two on the D string, and then another down up stroke on those high strings. All right, three and four again, here we go. Okay, great, now we have the first four measures of this intro section. We have one more measure to complete line number one, the first 10 seconds of the song. This last measure is gonna sound like this, with the C chord fretted. One more time. Okay, so that is the C chord. We're gonna grab the third fret of the A string and the high E string open. A down stroke. Then you're gonna jump your ring finger up to the third fret of the low E string, the G note, and then play zero two on the D string. If you put all of line number one together, it sounds like this. Just like that. Okay, great, now we have line number one down. We're moving on to line number two now. This is going to be from 10 seconds to 16 seconds into the track. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. And that gets us to line number three. Okay, so that first measure, we're gonna grab the A string and the G string together as we fret that C major chord. Then a down upstroke. Then we're going to change our root to the G. That's the third fret of the low E string. So far you have. Then an upstroke on the high strings. Then moving from the first measure into the second measure. Zero, two, zero on the G string. After that, we're gonna do a down upstroke on the C chord. Zero two on the D. Down up on those same high strings. Okay, put all that together, we have. And then this nice little hook here. So I'm still holding that first fret of the B string just to add a little bit of thickness. Uh, but basically what we're doing is we're going to play zero two zero on the G string. If you like the sound of that B string ringing with that, that sounds great. All right, tap that open string again. And then we're going to play D and G open. 
as you hammer down onto the second fret of the D string. Then we're gonna get to the G major chord for a downstroke, moving you into the third line. Okay, so now we're halfway done the intro section. I'm gonna play everything that we have so far, lines one and two. A one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so measures one and two of line number three. This is 16 seconds into the track. Basically going to be the exact same way that we started off this intro, except we have the G chord starting us off on the first beat. Then that same intro riff. Grab the G major chord. And that same strumming pattern over G. Okay, now uh, measures three and four of line number three. Okay, so these measures are gonna sound like this, real slow. Okay, on that third measure, I just took the G chord, hit the root. I strummed down to the G string, tap the G once more. Zero on the B, two on the G, zero on the B. Okay, try your best to do some alternate picking, especially as you start to get this down faster. All right, then uh, measure four of line number three. We grab the C chord, we've done this before. Okay, so I pluck the A string and the G string together using hybrid picking. Down, up, zero, two on the D, down, up. All right, and that gets you to the fifth measure of line number three. Okay, the last measure of line number three, it's gonna be very similar to the last measure of line number one. It's gonna sound like this. Okay, so the only thing that was different was those last two notes. Take the C chord, hit the root. Down, up. Then you're gonna hit the G note on the third fret low E string, and then play zero two on the G string. All right, and that'll get you to line number four. Okay, so let's review what we just learned. Let's play all of line number three. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, taking on line number four, uh, it's gonna be four measures long and it sounds like this. A one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so the first two measures of that, we have the G major chord fret it. We're actually not even gonna be using the high E string, so the pinky doesn't really need to be there. You strum uh, three times, all downstrokes. One, two, three. Then you're gonna do an upstroke on the first fret of the B string. Okay, then grab a D major chord. We're gonna strum down, 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 up, down, up. Okay, now we're tackling the third and fourth sections of that last line. It's gonna sound like this with the C chord fret it. Now real slow. All right, just grab the C chord. You're not gonna have the middle finger down though at first. Strum down to the G string, then grab that second fret of the D string. All right, then we're gonna strum the G string, B string, and high E string. All right, hit the G string. Then we're gonna grab a hammer on as you're holding down that first fret of the B string. That'll get you to a G chord. Okay, so one more time. All right, 
right, then on the G chord, strum down, 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 up, down, up. Okay, fantastic everybody, you've made it through that entire intro. Now I'm gonna play the whole thing at a very slow tempo, and uh, you can practice playing along. Oh, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, great everybody, you have that intro section down, combining those rhythm and lead parts from the original track. Not easy, uh, definitely was a little challenging, but totally worth learning. Now we're jumping into the verse section. From here on out, everything is much easier, basically just some chords and strumming. Um, but there's still some really cool things to learn. So, all the verses are played the exact same way. We have the G major chord for two measures. If my words take glow. Same strumming pattern, bass down, bass up, down, up, two times on the G. Then we're gonna to move to the C major chord on Sunshine. There we're gonna strum like this. We need five measures of that. So take the C chord, hit the root, a down stroke, then grab the G note and play up, down, up. So bass down, bass up, down, up, bass down, bass up, down. All right, that'll take you up to here. If my words did glow, the gold of sunshine, and my tunes were playing. strong we go back to the G chord now you've got the first two lines of that verse one section it's at this point that I like to throw in that intro riff one more time would you hear my voice then I'll have two measures of G major again Before get into the word music, where I go back to the C major chord for two measures. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. All right, and that sums up, sums up the first three lines of that verse section. Okay, now let's look at the fourth line on your chord sheet for that verse section. This part's gonna sound like this. Would you hold it near as it were? Okay, and that'll get you to verse number two. Okay, so I take the G major chord, bass down, bass up, down, up, it's one measure there. The D major chord, I like to alternate my bass notes on as many chords as possible, it just sounds great for solo performance. So I'll hit the bass note, uh, D, strum down, then hit the A string, and follow that with up, down, up. Same thing, uh, same technique for the C chord. And then the G major chord played the exact same way it was before. Put all that together, we have. Some very professional strumming there. Okay, that gets you to verse number two. Okay, so as I mentioned before, all the verses are played the exact same way. Super simple stuff. The thing that's most challenging is trying to grab those strings and get those roots to be more pronounced and not muddy. Uh, one trick that I like to throw in, uh, and this will be the last thing for your verses, it's just a little G trick. Sounds like this. If I have the G major chord, it's a hand me down. 
Mm -hmm. All right, a little uh, kind of riff on that up, down, up stroke on that G major chord. So I hit the G chord. I make it to that second bass note, then. A little trick that I noticed that Jerry was throwing in in the live performances. Up, down, up as you put down a little A minor seven shape. That's the second fret of the D string, first fret of the B string. All right, I love this trick. I use it in a lot of my own songs. All right, so. It's a hand me down. The thoughts are broken. All right, so on and so forth. From there, all the verses are exactly the same. Sprinkle that little trick throughout as you like. Okay, now we're jumping into our chorus section. If we were coming out of verse number two, we would end that verse with two measures of the G major chord. That'll get us into the chorus, which is A minor. For two measures. D major chord for two measures. That's still alternated. Then line number two of the chorus, the G chord for a measure. A C chord for a measure. Then here's where it gets really wild. They throw in an A major chord for line number three of the chorus. Just a measure there before going to the D chord to finish up the chorus. You put all that together, we have to the next verse. Now, the only other thing I might want to show you here is how I might walk down into that first A minor chord of the chorus. So if I have the G chord uh, leading me from a verse into a chorus, I might like to play. All right, so that was. A G, walk down to A minor. Just hit the root. Hit a down upstroke on the G chord, then change the root to F sharp. All right, then you can do a down, up, down after you've changed that root. Then the same picking pattern with alternating bass over A minor sounds fantastic. Okay, great work everybody. You're basically ready to perform. You've got that intro, the verse, and the chorus sections down. The last thing I wanna show you is how you can emulate the mandolin part in the chorus section, okay? Using your guitar. Now in my demonstration, I used the guitar and I got the high note uh, using my ukulele, okay? Because I didn't have a mandolin handy. So, you're gonna grab the fifth fret of the high E string. We're gonna hear this. One, two, three, four. something along those lines. Works very, very well. So we're gonna have the fifth fret high E string. We're gonna have two measures at this tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then go up to the seventh fret. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we went from seven down to five. Then we're gonna go up a whole step. One measure on the seventh fret, high E string, it's a B note. Three, four, up a fret, three, four, up a fret, three, four, up a fret. All right, then we're gonna descend down on that last measure. Okay, so that was 10th fret, high E string, eighth fret, seventh fret. What I suggest that you do is just listen through that chorus over and over and practice that fast picking. Using just the tip of your pick, okay? I'm trying to show you there. That's gonna allow you to be able to skim past the string nice and clean. Just like that. 
All right, everybody, congratulations. You have another uh, great tune added to your repertoire. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on the Grateful Dead's Ripple. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying the extra resources. If you have a song that you would like for me to teach next, you can click over to swiftlessons.com. That full link is in the description. Take and request now. I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.